Well, Ollie Palmer, what a way to start the new year with your first Don's goal. How did it feel? Yeah, and obviously fantastic to, to get out there. First league start in the new stadium for me. Um, something I've, I've had to be a little bit patient for, for, for a few reasons. And, um, no, it's good to get a goal, but obviously disappointed with the result. Yeah, of course. But to get the goal at the new stadium, you saw it being built in the summer, links to the family, and of course scoring against a previous club as well. Yeah, no, I don't... Yeah, it's it's one of them. Um, I was at Lincoln for a year, and it's you know it's a great club with with some great people working there, and um, a really good fan base, and I I really enjoyed my time there. Um, but it was just just a job on the day for me, and it was it was good to get the goal. And like I said, the main thing I'd rather have not scored and took all three points, but that that wasn't the case. We proved quite effective up front as well, partnering with Joe Piggott as well. You enjoyed that. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, we've been training together for a while. Um, I know how he plays, he knows how I play, and um, I thought we were, we were effective in in the game. Is He's he's managing a, a bit of a foot problem at the moment, and I'm, I'm managing a, a bit of a problem with my hip as well, so it's, I still probably don't think he's seen, seen the best of us there, but it is def, definitely effective. As you said, your first full 90 minutes, how did you feel after? Yeah, no, fine. Um, in terms of fitness, probably like fatigued in, in the last kind of twenty minutes. Um, but again, it is, it's. I still felt like we were always going to get some out of the game. Um, you know, we we we've, we've made an individual mistake um, at the back, and that happens. That can happen to anyone. Um, and there's, there's things you can't really plan for. Um, if you look at the performance collectively and defensively at the back, I thought we were solid and they didn't really have many clear-cut chances. So, um, you know, it's, it's disappointing, but, you know, we've got to dust ourselves down and go again. One particular moment that brought a tear to the eye in the second half, you just got to run it off, I guess, yeah? <laughs> that was clean on. That was that was straight on target. Um, that hurt a lot. I think some of the lads thought I got winded, but that wasn't yeah. the case. It hit me right in the private area, so... Um, from only five yards away, so that hurt a lot. What's it been like though? I mean, just take us through the, the mindset and everything of trying to get back to full fitness, you know, coming coming to the club and then having to work through things during the national crisis as well. It's not been easy. It's, it's been the most frustrating start to a season I've ever had, hands down. Um, had surgery, which I've never needed to have in my career before in the summer. Built up from that. Started training in October, November time and tore my quad. Um, and then I had to wait another four or five weeks. Build up my fitness, playing 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, doing well against Doncaster, coming on, coronavirus outbreak. Have to now go and spend two weeks at home. Then you've got to build up your fitness again because they don't want to risk another injury. Um, get in the team, score, play well. Don't get the result that we wanted, but got an opportunity to go again again against Wigan on Wednesday, gets called off, coronavirus, and now I've got to wait two weeks for another uh, league game. Um, so it's been the most stop-start frustrating season I've had, um, but it's just something you've got to deal with, and you know, it's the same for, for other lads as well. That are, you know, Luke O'Neill's had a tough time, he's been injured, um, he, he's needed... Um, he needed surgery, then he had the coronavirus outbreak, then he didn't have surgery, and then he had surgery. So it's just, it's been like it for a few people, it's not just me. Um, it's been frustrating, but I've just got to get my head down, work hard, and um, be ready for, for when more opportunities come. Which, in fairness, you've done, because then when you came here in pre season, all the pre season games, you were out there by the side of the pitch working away, weren't you? Yeah, I was, it was hard to watch, um, you know, sitting on a bike throughout pre season, watching the boys get the minutes in. Um, I was hopeful to be involved from probably the second or third league game and then I had this had this tear in my quad which I'm still actually trying to deal with now. Um not really too sure why, but just got a niggling pain from it. But it is what it is, um something I can manage and, and just kind of get through. But part and parcel of the job and um I just wanna get out on that pitch, I just wanna be scoring and mainly I want I want the team to be winning, which I think you can see from the Oxford game and the Lincoln game we're more than capable of doing it's just a little bit of bad luck and we can we can turn the form around we saw what you were like of course after you'd scored the goal as well it's kind of like a weight off the shoulders and you were out there you were really buzzing you were really getting around the pitch yeah no of course I mean it always gives you an extra spring in the step when you when you get your goal um, it's something I've been waiting for I've had to be patient with, with, with my injury and 
um, getting my starting, getting getting a start in the team. So of course it meant a lot to me. And it's the way I play. I'm a passionate player. I'm not going to be able to celebrate like Thierry Henry and not smile. So um, it, yeah, it did mean a lot to me, um, and I, I want more of it really. Of course. Um, how have you been impressed by not only the likes of Jack Rodoni, Anthony Hartigan, but the other youngsters that have come through our academy that were part of that squad for the build-up for the game, their attitude? That, that is the, the flip side of it, um, you know, when, when you've got injuries and, um, and illnesses and people missing the game, <clears throat> you see some of the young lads come through and I was looking at a photo of, I, I think, um, I was looking at a photo of one of the youth team, youth team games a few years ago and I realised there's about nine of them training with us. So, and there's probably about four or five of them on the bench on um, Saturday. So, that that's amazing. That's a credit to the football club and the way that they want to build from the ground up and <clears throat> involve all the all the young the young lads and and rightly so. They deserve to be training with us. There, there's some really good talent out there, you know. And you forget he's twenty and he's played so many games. Um, and you know, there's other young lads training which you think you'll be all right. Like you'll have a good career as long as you keep your head down and you work hard. Um, you know, you you've got a good future ahead of you. But of course, one of the men responsible for helping to, to get their development to get to the first team is an old Woking Academy teammate of yours, James Oliver Pearce, who you must know very well. Yeah, yeah Sammy. I've called him Sammy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's, Sammy's a great lad. Um, you know, if you want someone working with um, young lads, uh, it'd be him. He's a really good, bubbly guy. He wants the best for you. He's just one of them good people in football. So um, they're all in good hands and hopefully he can keep producing some, some really good young talent. What are your hopes now for the new year, particularly the fact that we're still trying one day to get these fans back into the stadium? Yeah, that's been... I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? You think I've not, we've not played in front of any fans yet. So, um, get fans back in the stadium as soon as possible, which would be an, a massive lift. It'd be a huge boost to have the fans back in. Um, and take one game at a time, and the next game is the checker trade. But um, we've got to beat Bristol Rovers first, so if we can do that. That'd be fantastic, and then on to Sunderland at home. We spoke about when we we did the interview at Plough Lane, of course, in the summer when you came there. It was being built. What's it like now, actually stepping out there? It's something special, yeah. It is. It's an amazing stadium. Um, it it's it's perfect for the club. It's in a great area. Um, it's it's just one of the modern new stadiums that away teams will also enjoy coming to. But without the fans, to be honest with you, it's just a football pitch right now, and you can see. When, when you're out there, when it's full, it will be unbelievable. The noise will stay in the stadium because of the surrounding buildings. And the sooner we get the fans in, the better. Simple as that. Um, the players need it just as much as the fans need it. So um, hopefully things turn a corner in the next month or two. I'm not sure they will, but hopefully they do. And um, we can start seeing the fans back in the stadium as soon as possible. That attracted you to the project, though, didn't it? Plough Lane, you see the stadium, but the other players, you think, will, will look at there now and go, "I'd like a piece yeah. of that." No, of course, it's it is a huge thing. You want to play in, the, you want to play in the best stadiums with the best fans, and you want to be, you want to have good, good atmospheres every week. We can create that at Plough Lane without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so, of course, it's attractive to players and um, and everyone like me, who, you know, who wants to come here and and play in front of good crowds. Well, good catching up with you. Well done on the first game. Cheers, mate. Thanks.